So now that we've had a, a lengthy discussion on um, determining if a function is invertible or not, uh, now we can start talking about uh, how to find the inverse uh, of a function if it exists. Um, and so uh, it's a pretty straightforward process, and it's, it's actually one that we've uh, informally been doing all along. Um, to find an inverse function, all you have to do is interchange coordinates. And that's because, again, an inverse function is an inverse mapping. So uh, in our uh, next example, um, we're given a, a function f as three ordered pairs. Um, and in part a, we want to find the inverse. So it really is as simple as just interchanging the coordinates. Instead of negative 1, 5, we have 5, negative 1. Instead of 2, 4, we have 4, 2. And instead of negative 3, negative 6, we have negative 6, negative 3. So that's the inverse of f. Uh, in part b, it says the inverse, evaluate the inverse at negative 6. Well, remember, function notation just tells you pretty much where to go look. Um, we want to go find the inverse function. Uh, there it is. And when our x value is negative 6, what's our y value? Well, it looks like it would spit out a negative 3. So f of uh, the inverse of f at negative 6 is equal to negative 3. Okay. Um, and finally, in example c, uh, we have a composition problem, which uh, maybe it's easiest to look at like this. So we'll start with f of 2. So going back up here now uh, to the original f, uh, when x is 2, uh, you can see that it's going to spin out the 4. So now we'll need the inverse at 4. Uh, the inverse at 4 then in turn spits back out the 2. Now that's probably uh, what you expected to happen, um, considering a function takes you somewhere and the inverse then brings you right back. So in this example, uh, now instead of giving, being given sets of ordered pairs, we're given the uh, actual equation of a function. Um, so finding an inverse is, is done uh, no differently. Uh, we simply interchange the coordinates. Um, so now we'll have x equals y minus 2 over y plus 3. Um, we do need to carry on a little further here and solve for y, uh, but once we do that, we have our inverse. Um, so to go ahead and solve this for y, I'll multiply both sides by the denominator, y plus 3, distribute the x, and then I'll want to get all of my y's on the same side uh, so xy minus y equals a negative 3x minus 2. And then since the y's are on the same side, I can factor it out and then divide off the x minus 1. So what I have here is actually the inverse function. Now, the second part of this, though, is, is to check it. Uh, this really shows or demonstrates that you understand um, what uh, an actual inverse is doing for you. Um, so one of the things that I might do here uh, is I might pick a number that's going to work pretty easily. Uh, so for me, maybe I'll take f of 2. Uh, and you can see that if I take f of 2, when I plug this in to function f, uh, end up getting a zero. Now, that might seem just kind of random at this point, but um, the next step is actually going to be to take the inverse at zero. Now, if you take the inverse at zero, uh, what should you expect to get? Well, you should expect to get what you started with. So if I take my negative three times zero minus two over zero minus one, you can see, in fact, we end up with that original 2 that we started with, so we know our inverse is doing exactly what it should be. Uh, now, it should be noted that, again, the 2 uh, that I picked to start, uh, nothing really special about it. You can pick any number that's in the domain. Um, I just happened to pick it because it was going to make for an easy computation. 
And in the last example for this section, uh, we'll go ahead and start with function f, which equals x cubed minus 2. Uh, and we'll start by finding the inverse of it. Uh, so similar to the last problem, uh, we'll go ahead and interchange the coordinates. And I'll solve this for y. So x plus 2 equals y cubed. And then I'll cube root both sides so that y equals the cube root of x plus 2. And now having solved for y, that's our inverse. Okay. Now, the second part says to graph both the function and the inverse on the same xy plane. So what I'll do, uh, and you'll notice that both of those are just parent functions with transformations. Uh, function f is your cube function uh, shifted down two units. So maybe something like this, where that is at negative 2. And then the inverse is going to be the cube root function shifted two units to the left. So maybe something like that, where that's also negative 2. And that's the inverse. Now, <clears throat> to be clear on this, um, there, there's some really significant um, conclusions here we can talk about uh, and that's where part C in this example comes into play. Um, earlier I said uh, to find an inverse you interchange the coordinates. So if we did this correctly um, you can actually see that our ordered pairs here, uh, this ordered pair right here would be the point 0, negative 2 and this ordered pair here would be the point negative 2, 0 which are interchanged. Which leads us now to the idea of symmetry. Uh, function and its inverse uh, absolutely have symmetry. In fact, uh, the symmetry between a function and its, its inverse will always be across the line y equals x. So if you graph a function and its inverse uh, and it's not symmetric about the line y equals x, um, then something went wrong and, and we would need to go back and address it.